Ednam's broadside. Too short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Birds Reviews. I've got a beer here that I thought I'd reviewed, but I hadn't. And I've drank it quite a few times, and I quite like it. It's Adnam's Broadside. Now, if you've not had this before, this is quite a good, a quite a good uh, ruby ale. I tried this on draft in a, I think it's a Witherspoons actually, and uh, they had it on there for a while. And it was really good. They kept it quite well, which is unusual for a Witherspoons, but it was really good. And um, I was really impressed with it. And there was a point when they had it on there that you know, I would always go to that if I was uh, ever passing. And uh, I've seen it in the bottles a few times. And I thought I'd reviewed it, but I hadn't. So now I'm going to put that right. Here is the bottle. Here is the glass. Let's do battle. Now... This is from the Adams Brewery. They are based in Southwold, which is up in uh, Norfolk. That's a strange place. They have got webbed feet, webbed hands. Uh, their brother is their uncle and their sister is their auntie. But they know how to brew beer. In fact, the Adams Brewery is quite, um, quite eco-friendly. It's got a huge uh, solar panel and garden built on top of the brewery. And uh, they do quite a lot right. Before I go any further, the fellow next door is drilling. I don't know what he's drilling for, but he's been at it all afternoon. Now he's alright actually, and my missus was watching that uh, Neighbours from Hell the other day, and I'll tell you something, there's some fucking arseholes out here, isn't there? But they're alright, they're good people, so you're just going to have to put up the drilling. I'm not going to knock him for that. Anyway, back to the beer. Now these are, as I say, they're based up in Norfolk, and they do some really good ales, but all the ones I've tried from Adnams have been really good. They do a ghost ship, which again, I thought I'd reviewed, and I hadn't. I was looking up Adams today, just before I'd done this video, and I haven't done them. So I'm gonna try and get hold of some Ghost Ship as well. That's a, that's their IPA. And I'm gonna review that, and uh, I'll let you know. But this stuff is the um, is their Ruby Ale, it's the Broadside. In fact, I think it might be their flagship ale. Let's have a, have a nose on here. Oh, it smells lovely. Yeah, lots of rich chocolate and toffee malt on that, carrots and caramel too, and some slight hop bitterness, some British hop bitterness on that, and it's really nice. Um, as I say, I thought I'd done it, but I've, I thought I'd done, I'd reviewed it, sorry, and uh, I, in fact I've done, the, I've done their bitter, their South Wild bitter, which was really nice, and I compared that to the Hobgoblin, um, I can't remember what it was, the Hobgoblin bitter, and Hobgoblin was just fucking nowhere compared to the, the Adam stuff and as I say I've drank this before and I have drank their um, ghost ship and they're really good and they're quite a good uh, varied brewer they do um, seasonal beers as well which are really good and they're not afraid to uh, experiment either they you know they do Mars and, and they do um, they do other styles of beer which a lot of brewers wouldn't touch anyway here it is in the glass, very, very dark. That is a really dark chestnut ale, which is a good sign. Um, I've got it in a London Pride glass, so I just hope you can see all that in there. It's a lovely sort of beigey head on there, sort of off-white beigey head. Uh, I can't see if there's any carbonation. I'm looking through it, that's a lovely chestnut colour. There's a fair bit of carbonation, but that's really nice. You can't see the, the actual colour, but that is a beautiful chestnut, dark, dark chestnut mahogany colour. Um, on the nose, what are we getting? Oh, that smells so good. That smells really rich, malty, toffee malt. And a little bit of chocolate malt on that as well. It just smells really good. Now, as I say, this is, this is coming in a 500ml bottle. And it's 6%. Which, uh, sorry, 6.3%. Which is a... Uh, 
which is pretty hefty for a, a ruby ale. But um, as I say, I'm not going to lie. Pretend, oh, isn't this wonderful? I've never tasted flavour like this before. I've tried it and it's great. But I'm going to revisit it because the last time I had this must have been about six months ago, something like that. It was during the winter, and this is a winter drink, and this is just coming up to spread it is spring so i'm just sort of probably drinking it at the slightly wrong time but it's still a bit nippy out there but let's get it down the hatch and that is beautiful that is absolutely beautiful really full-bodied really strong toffee malts on that it's like caramel malt in as well but it's so full bodied and it just it just oozes quality it's as I say there's more malt than there is hops but there is some slight hop bitterness in there and they tend to be um, well they, they taste like British hops again I've just reviewed the uh, black sheep ale um, that was a 10 out of 10 that was absolutely fantastic and that was pretty similar it had it was more hoppier than it was like this. This is malt heavy, which I'd expect from a, a British ruby ale. And as I was saying with the, the black sheep one, it, it seems to be a style that's overlooked by the craft brewers. Yeah, they all want to do the stouts, they all want to do the uh, the IPAs, you know, the East and the West Coast, and they even want to do the lagers, but they just tend to ignore the um, the ruby ales and the, and the British style ales. I don't know. It's like an, it's an embarrassment to them, and I don't go. I don't know why. This is, you know, as I said in the last one, these, and I missed them out. I was listing, you know, um, which, you know, if if a foreigner said to me, "Oh, can you recommend some really good British beer?" I was saying, Timothy Taylor, um, Feakston's, the Black Sheep stuff, London Pride, you know, the Fuller's stuff, you know, the sixteen ninety eight, the Shepherd Name IPA. That sort of stuff, you know, that proper malt heavy, but with bitter British hops. And I missed out Adnams, and Adnams deserve a place in here as well, because a pint of this, this is just so typically British. That is a typical, good quality British ruby ale. Oh, it's beautiful. That is really good. And now, a lot of people talk about um, Whole Goblin as the, the ultimate ruby ale this I should actually do a head to head with the two because it's a long time since I drank Hob Goblin I think I've reviewed it on here and it is good don't get me wrong Hob Goblin is quite good but this is just and again with the Southwold bitter that I compared to the Hob Goblin bitter this just seems to be so full bodied and the quality of the malts is really good oh it's so rich and as I say I know I keep labouring the point about the malts but they're really good and there's a just enough hot bitterness on that as, as I say it is British malt uh, British malts that they're using in here and there's British hops that they're using in here as well I, I don't think it lists what um, what hops they are using or no sadly not uh, it says broadside is brewed to commemorate the Battle of Soul Bay, 1672. This is dark ruby red beer. It's full of fruit cake flavours. Yeah, it is very fruity. I did miss out telling you that there is definite fruit on that, as you would get with um, most British ruby ales. It's full of fruit cake flavours and is great, saved with some strong cheddar. Yeah, of course, anything goes with cheese. Any beer goes with cheese, doesn't it? But this is a standout ale for me. And these are often overlooked, you know, you see a lot of people reviewing beer and they're going for these obscure American IPAs or they're going for these obscure German wheat beers and whatnot, which are good, don't get me wrong, they've got their place. But this stuff often gets overlooked and I think, why? You know, I would love for this to be, you know, savoured and imitated by the Americans because they're really missing out, you know, and... You know, if there's any Americans watching this, and you can get hold of this, get some of this. This is a standout one, you know, and there's others as well. Um, Theakston's, 
um, do Old Peculiar, which is a really good one. Fuller's do one, the um, 1845, I think it is, and uh, Shepherd Neem do one, the 1698. They're all, you know, in a similar sort of vein, really malt heavy. Um, the Germans do it as well. They do them. They like their malty beers. You know, they do, um, you know, like the uh, the Alp beers and the um, in Bavaria, Iinga do the uh, Old Bavarian Dark or the Alt Bayerisch Dunkel, as they call it. But they're very sweet malts because they they go very light on the hops when they do that. The British stuff, they just throw in all the strong British hops, you know, which are earthy, spicy, and bitter. Like most British people, actually. <laughs> Can't think of it. Um, but they use great malts in here as well. And they've, they've pulled out all the stops on this one. And I can see why it's their flagship ale. If I was a brewer, I'd be really proud of this. This is really good. I defy anybody to say... That is bad. This is this is amazing stuff. I love it. I absolutely love this stuff. And I don't care if they got six fingers. I don't care if their families are all related. I don't care if there's one gene pool up in Norfolk. This is great stuff. It's brilliant. <laughs> I'm probably going to incur the wrath of the entire population of Norfolk, if they ever see this video, and they're probably going to come down with the, you know, the straw hanging out of their mouth and the pitchforks and rawr. All joking aside, Adnams, again, you've come up trumps. And that's a 10 out of 10. And that is highly recommended. I urge you to try some of this broadside stuff. The, um, the cask stuff, I think, is a lot lower percentage. I think it's about 5%. The bottled stuff is 6.3%. But it's it's just so full of flavour, it really is. And you know, you can imagine this is a really good hearty winter drink. Love it, absolutely love it. Ten out of ten, recommended. And remember, beer is working class champagne.